Thanks for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review, where I talk about this JBL SE 401 transducer energizer, as it was called in the 1967 JBL Heritage catalog. Now, it's actually a power amplifier that was rated at 60 watts per channel, no ohm specified, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz at 0.5% THD. It was a $231 option in 1967, which is about $2,000 today. And it was designed to be put in either the Metragon or Paragon speaker systems. And it did not come with this case. It was just designed to be mounted. There was also options for a preamp and even an equalizer. And in fact, you'll see when I turn this around, there is a place where you could put a certain equalizer for your speakers in there. Now it did not come in this wooden cabinet. This is courtesy of my neighbor friend and master woodworking craftsman Rich who built this cabinet to hold this amplifier so it would be more presentable and easier to use. And we added the on off switch as well as put a place for the um, pilot light that it has when power is applied and we uh, built a little cord here to plug into their power socket. It did not come like that. So right now I'm going to zoom in on the front and the back and then I'm going to show you kind of a cutaway view of the electronics. There's not a whole lot to see on the SE402, but we do have a few things to point out. We have our RCA inputs right here and here. We also have individual gain controls for each channel. Our speaker wires are connected here and they are the kind where you push down on them and shove the wire in. We do have a fuse and this right here is the power connection and I ended up making uh, an adapter so that we can just plug it in rather easily. And there, it's wired into an on off switch here. And when the power is turned on, there is a lamp here that lights up. So that's kind of the, uh, the front of the unit. So I kind of wanted to show the rear of the SE401 just so you could kind of see how it sets in the cabinet that my buddy Rich built. And one thing I wanted to point out is this is a transducer equalizer card, this guy right here. And apparently you could purchase a different card for a different frequency response to match your speaker better. In a moment you're going to see a view that shows how all the circuits are kind of set up. In Here is kind of a cutaway view of the SE401 amplifier when the covers have been removed over the power supply area and the transformer and it kind of just shows the topology of the circuitry and you can see half of the output transistors there are four for each channel and they're all pnp germanium output transistors our first piece of data is the se401 putting out one watt into eight ohms. And you can see that its gain is about 23 dB. The THD is less than the 0.5% spec. The SNR is in the upper 70s. That's not so bad. But the THD plus noise is at 48 dB. That is not stellar. But this is a 56-year-old amplifier or so. Here we have the THD SNR at 1 kHz with the SE401 putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. And there really isn't much change from the 1 watt status other than the SNR has improved 2 to 3 dB. The THD is still less than 0.5% and the THD plus noise has stayed about the same at 47 dB. Here we have the frequency response of the SE401 with the amplifier putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms and it looks to be down maybe 8 tenths of a dB at 20 kilohertz. It does have some noise starting at 300 hertz but it's only about a tenth of a dB and that is most likely not anything you would hear an effect from. Here we have the THD SNR at 1 kilohertz with the SE401 putting out 26 watts into 8 ohms and its performance really hasn't changed much since it was operating at 5 watts into 8 ohms. The THD is less than the 0.5% requirement and the SNR is right around 80 dB. The THD plus noise has not changed that much either.
Here we have the SE401 putting out about 29 watts into 8 ohms. And even though the THD is less than 0.5%, which is the spec limit, the SNR has decreased about 30 dB from where it was at 26 watts, and the THD plus noise has also gotten worse. You can also see the greater number of harmonics that have been generated. And while I could have increased the power more, I decided at this point I really didn't want to go any further with it. So this was about the most power that I thought I would put out of the unit. This plot is showing the crosstalk between the left and right channels. In this case, I have a signal going to the left channel and the right channel's input is terminated and we are looking at what is coming out from the left channel onto the right channel. And I would say we have about 30 dB of isolation in this case. There's a little peak at maybe 26 dB at the 60 hertz mark, but other than that, we're pretty well 30 dB or better. This shows the output impedance of the SC402 amplifier for both channels. And it's basically 2.2 ohms, worst case, and if you divided 8 by 2.2 ohms, you would get a damping factor uh, a bit less than 4. Here we have the results of the multi-tone response test, and it's showing about 9 bits of distortion free range. And our final plot shows the THD versus frequency for three different power levels into 8 ohms. And for the most part, across all of the frequency band it does meet the less than 0.5 percent thd around 10 kilohertz and up to maybe 15 kilohertz it is peaking at maybe 0.7 percent thd and then it drops back down so overall it did a pretty good job of meeting its old requirement for thd as you saw from the data the performance of this unit was not stellar, but it is 56 years old with all of the original parts, best I can tell, and is doing a pretty good job meeting its requirements. The only real requirement was that it had to have a THD of less than 0.5%, and it did that up to 29 watts where I stopped testing because I thought the THD plus noise was getting really ugly looking. So at that point I stopped, I don't know what would have happened if I actually ran it up to 60 watts if I was able to do that, but at least at 25, 26 watts, it looked decent, although the THD plus noise was ar around the upper 40s, but the THD was still less than 0.5%. And now as far as listening, I hooked this up to my Carver C1 preamp and the Klipsch La Scala loudspeakers, and I listened to it for several hours. Other than the initial hum that you get when you turn it on, and the there's a little buzz out of the left channel, but you don't really hear that once music is playing, and if you're even a few feet away, it really is not something you would pick up. So what I decided to do in this case was to actually record the hums as the amplifier was turned on for both channels and you'll get to hear that as well as look at the wave what i decided to do was to capture the hum out of each channel and the way i did that was to use a microphone on a tripod and it was placed about four inches away from the uh, tweeter mid-range area of my clips la scala speakers and what you are going to see is the recorded sound that i captured this first little part which goes from here to here will be for the left channel this little spike right in this area is when the power switch is turned on you can hear kind of a, a louder hum and then it kind of dies down to like a lower hum beginning right here to here is the right channel with the microphone placed just about four inches away and this was after it had been on for a while and then what I did is this section right here, this is for the left channel after it had been on for a while and the microphone was placed two feet away. And finally, this section right here is for the right channel with the microphone placed about four inches away when I turned 
things on. So I'm going to go ahead and play it and you can actually hear what it sounds like. So basically, you can hear the hum. It's louder in the right channel at the start, and then it kind of goes away. And you can see that by the amplitude of the waveform. And finally, it gets to a, a pretty low level, which is very close to what it is here. Also, these two levels, the right channel, after it's been on for a little while, is about the same level as this left channel signal that is measured two feet away. So it's kind of just an indication of the hum. It's not really any distraction other than when you first turn on, you, you do hear that. And then basically it, you don't hear it the rest of the listening experience. At least if you're, I'm probably 10 feet away, 8 feet away from um, where the speakers are. And I didn't hear any more hum effect. Now, as far as listening to it, I listened to it for several hours. And in fact, the owner of this, Richard, was over and we both thought it sounded really good. I mean, the La Scalas are very efficient. This will be used in a Clipshorn speaker, which is even more efficient than my La Scalas. And I could hear this in the back of my house um, at it, it just a reasonable level. I just was doing stuff and I had it on and it, it sounded really good. I was surprised at how well it sounded. So even though it kind of looked a little bit ugly um, in some ways, it, it sounded just fine other than that little bit of hum, which honestly, you won't hear once it turns on or are a few feet away playing music. Maybe if you play played a lot of classical music or there's quieter passages, it might be something that you hear, but most likely eight to 10 feet away from the speakers, you're not gonna hear the amplifier for at least most speakers. That being said, I, I was really surprised at how well it did. The interesting thing is that these have kind of held their value in, in one way. They're uh, they sold for about two grand back in 67 in today's dollars and just looking on the internet they go anywhere from 500 to 1800 dollars so it's kind of um, surprising to see how valued they are and I guess they're a bit rare. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel that would be nice and of course I always like to hear your comments and until next time once again, have a great day or night.